Greetings and welcome back to the world of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons actual play campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Joel Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battlemaster. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We're the Dungeon Dudes. Kelly and I put out new videos on YouTube on Tuesdays and Thursdays where we cover everything D&D. So check out our YouTube channel for advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube and check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. With that, let us dive back into the world of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible, while simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Sebastian, Veo, and Paluto had left the castle at Helig to go investigate what has become of their friends, Wilhelm, Rudy, and Rath, who were exploring the quarry far north of the city. Using a stone from the quarry provided to them by Rudy's daughter, Reyna, they have teleported to the site where they arrive the, short, the, the morning after the blizzard. As you appear in space, your body is reincorporating from the shadowy energies of Sebastian's teleportation spell. You see the scene before you. The dwarves have excavated through ice and rock and strange metal, an ancient ruin of strange blue-gray stone engraved with carvings of curious cats. Between the archways is a great fountain, in the midst of which glimmers a shimmering portal of black and rainbow energy. All around you are the ruins of the dwarven encampment. The digging equipment, mine carts, scaffolding, and all that had once ostensibly been erected all around here much of it has been torn down and burned. And across from you, there is a large bonfire and a small campsite that where you see two dwarves packing and going through the various materials and goods that they can salvage. Behind you is a collapsing and partially burned cabin building and the remains of an old camp campsite and you can also see and smell burnt flesh, for there is a pile of bodies, and of which now only are skeletal ash remains that have been piled up in a pyre that rests near the quarry. The smell of the embers is dying down. Sensibly, it burned for several hours already, um, but it has only recently started to just die down. Immediately as you look around, there is no sight of Rudy, Wilhelm, or Wrath, but you see, you see Bruce the cat languishly lounging atop one of the archways, sunning himself beneath the cloud-covered sky. The, the dwarves are across the way, right? Yes. You see two dwarves, a far cry from the, cr 
crew that would have been sent before. There is a rough looking man and a and he is working well the woman she is sitting down over a notebook the two of them you can see even now the man is giving the woman a wide berth um we made it that was really good much better than last time yeah well yeah i, I told you guys it, I'm good. I'm good at <laughs> transporting. Yeah, I, uh... It's, you could say it's uh, one of my fortes. <laughs> yeah. I won't, but... <laughs> yeah. We could. We could. Um, I, I'm a bit concerned about the pile of bodies over there. Um, yeah. The I, burning. <laughs> I understand that of... Wrath is probably okay since it's familiars here, but what about, what about the others? We need to make sure Wilhelm is okay. I, uh... I hop into the quarry, and as I start walking, I don't take my eyes off the dwarves, but I stop sort of near the archway, and without, I kind of glance up at Bruce, and I go, Bruce, is Wrath okay? Bruce adjusts his weight, rolls around on his back, looks at you, and then begins licking his butt. <laughs> Good, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> you speak. Me and Bruce are friends. Oh, wow. I, um, That's so cool. I follow you down. I, I pull out a ration yeah. and I toss it on top of the archway. As you do, you hear a call out. That crazy cat's been up there all morning. Doesn't pay any regard to us. If you're looking for his owner, Disappeared last night. What do you mean disappeared? I imagine the same way you three just appeared out of nowhere. Wrath doesn't know how to teleport. Yeah, it's only for like high functioning. The dwarf adjusts his coat and... and pulls his goggles off his face. Been a lot of trouble these ways. Who are you? There's going to be more trouble if you don't tell us everything you know. We're here to rescue our three friends. They came this way just the other day uh, with a mission, and they haven't contacted us or been back yet, and we are concerned. And judging by the pile of burnt bodies in front of you, there's reason to be concerned. So I'll give you my name if you give me yours. The man is about to speak when the woman stands up and gestures to him. And she says, his name's Ert. I'm Dr. Catton. We're the only survivors of the expedition. Only survivors. Where yes. are our friends? Your friends arrived last night. And they survived, but when we awoke this morning, they were gone. Well, clearly they're not too far, I mean, Bruce here. Most of their things were still here. Their cat was here. But when we woke up, they were gone. And last night, this pool wasn't here. It was solid stone, like a frozen over fountain. And now it's like this. We don't know what to make of it. Or no mages. been a hard couple of days for us. There was something buried beneath the snow that killed all, almost all of us. Is it still here? The Ert looks at the doctor and says, apparently not. Apparently it's gone. At least as far as we know for now. There is any more, more of what killed anyone left. It's buried under the fresh snow from last night. Great. Are they, you know, just giving them a look, like, does it appear genuine? Is this, is there Give some, me an insight check. Is there some honesty here? Uh, 14. Like, is there an obvious, in the pile of bodies, is there anything other than dwarves? 
Ignatius, um, Ignatius is calm. Okay. He's not giving me any, uh, he's not screaming at me. No. You were, uh, you were hired by Sophia von Schneestrom to come here to excavate a family crypt? Aye, we were. Uh, we're, uh, all that's left of the company now. So, I, uh, the... The captain is dead. He mm. did all the negotiations with uh, Sophia. Dr. Catton adds that we really couldn't tell you much about the agreement that that the captain had with Sophia von Steenstrom. We knew that we were part of the agreement allowed us to take the medal. Mm. Well, understandable. Uh, Terribly sorry for what's happened to you and your crew. Uh, seems like it wasn't the best deal to take. In your professional opinion, being dwarves excavating and, uh, you know, your study of the rocks and ruins here. And I'm, I'm kind of looking at like the archways and stuff as I and I'm taking them in. Would you say this feels like a family crypt of the von Schneestroms, or does this feel like something else in your professional opinions? Dr. Catton and Ert look at each other. They say, Humans have built all kinds of things. They don't have the consistency of dwarven ar ar dwarves in their architectural style, so who are we to say? Dr. Catton looks, says, I'm a medical doctor, not an archaeologist. I'm very sorry. I, I walk up and I'm going to examine the, uh, the archways and like I'm putting my hand on them. And uh, uh, while speaking to them, I'm kind of giving my own thorough examination. But I say, so are you assuming human design? Dr. Catton says, I'm not assuming anything at this stage. We're done here. I would recommend you stay put until we find our friends. Ert replies, We've nowhere to go. We barely have enough supplies to make it back to Helig. Well, just so happens I can get you back to Helig. Uh, Sebastian Crow's the name, by the way. Um, He's a bus driver. I What's am a, a bus? <laughs> it's a term the kids are using for magic that teleports you from place to place. Mm. Um, I'm... Quite an esteemed mage of the Am Amethyst Academy. Uh, possibly the greatest sorcerer that ever lived. You may have heard of me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and these are my friends, Veo Senya. I'm uh, the Lord Commander of Dragonheim, if you haven't heard of me. Um, uh, yeah. And Pluto Jackson. Uh, Caspian Prince and just all around cool guy. Right. And your friend was the king of Drakenheim. Yeah, and exactly. Did yeah. Him. yeah, so yeah, he didn't see him. Big Doctor. stupid mustache. <laughs> Missing an eye. Missing an eye, yeah. You know him. Um, you see them. Impossible to miss. Well, I'm sorry to say we don't know where they've gone. Well, clues here speak to the uh, magical location that has appeared overnight and now they're missing um i do want to look at the ground to see if there's any footprints of our friends cool give me either survival investigation or perception your choice investigation 11. <laughs> okay fortunately from what you can piece together there was a very heavy snowfall the night before so there the tracks in the snow are pretty obvious. And given the difference in height between your friends and the dwarves, there's a clear and obvious difference between dwarven footprints in this snow, which are waist deep and like a solid line, 
and human footprints, which are which are enough to actually like cause separate footsteps. Okay. So given given the difference in height and, and weight in the snow, um, all signs point to the human footprints walked into this fountain. I give one last look at Bruce. I throw up another ration. I'm like Bruce. I kind of like gesture towards. What are the rations that you're offering to Bruce? I just have rations. Okay, because like. Bruce is interested in fresh meat. Oh, he doesn't <laughs> like, like jerky? jerky. <laughs> I guess so. But are your, your rations your, your jerky or are your rations bread? like... They're like old bread and probably Wait, can some... Can you press a digitate it to make it taste like fresh fish? Yeah. No, I don't have press a digitate. Yeah, I can. The cat's not impressed with you. I'm oh, throwing like say. stale bread at him like Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> you ever throwing stale bread at a cat? Just not impressed. Bruce, Bruce. <laughs> Did they go? Did they go this way, Bruce? You think you're doing him? Rath, like Rath told me this please. is how Bruce. Why? This this way, Bruce. Listen, uh, Bruce is way pickier than I am when it comes to food. Just don't waste them on Bruce. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> um. All right, Bruce. I'm going into the well. Um, if I'm not back in like an hour. Uh, Call for help. Hold on, we're going no, into roll the me a d6. Two. Six. Three. Okay. As you say the words, okay, Bruce, I'm going into the well, quite suddenly, the earth shakes <gasps> and rocks. There is a minor earthquake. It lasts maybe about five seconds. The tremors and like part of the building, one of the, the, the remains of the cabin collapse. Ah! I, I quickly look, is like any, is, is like the door to the down, to the staircase closing, is anything like that happening? The, right now, you, you, Sebastian has no idea that there was ever a staircase there because you just see a shimmering oh. field over top of, uh, over top of it. There is no visible staircase there at all. Okay. Here. Magic's yeah. crazy, man. Yeah. Um, the only thing that give me a perception check, Bill. One. Okay. <laughs> yep, you're too distracted by the earthquake to see if anything else might have occurred. Guys, what just happened? Pluto? Was that you? That <laughs> <It> was you. <laughs> You'll know when I make earthquakes. Uh, I mean, is it natural or is there something going on beneath us? Nothing about this feels natural. Hey, uh, uh, Ert, is there space below? We tried digging. He points to the remains of the mining drill uh, that is delirium tip that they've since disassembled. Um, and says, we'd use this to dig and we'd unearthed a couple other ways that we thought might have been entrances, but they were no entrances, only destruction how can we get down there he said well we dug out a couple of our old or we dug out our own barracks and come into contact with some stonework underneath and a strange gateway <clears throat> but it wasn't a gateway that you could go in anything that went in it would just be destroyed oh yeah that sounds like a really bad door um i mean we could just check out some of their tunnels, see if you can get a, a sense. Um, I would love to uh, just maybe use Mage Hand to like poke the water. Okay. Casting Mage Hand, the hand touches the surface of the water and there is an immediate response. As, the, as several tendrils reach out from the water and uh, pull apart your mage hand, dispelling the spell. This is aggressive water. Um. <laughs> Maybe it's been sitting for a really long time. Yeah. Yeah, there's something in it. Something breathing in there. <laughs> Fair, why are you poking the water? I don't know, this is magical, so I thought I'd use... Mm. It's different colors than what regular water is. I'm going to put on the goggles and activate True Sight and look into the pool of water. Looking into the pool of water, 
you can see through it that this is a magical barrier. Give me an arcana check. 13. Okay. This is a powerful spell, perhaps a dangerous one. It is no illusion, but rather it is creating opaque magical force that, at, because it's not an illusion, your true sight doesn't see through it, hmm. right? It is no different than drawing a curtain a across it. Um, unfortunately, with your check results, it's not clear what the magic is, but it is certainly a veal that is drawn across whatever's there. Hey, uh, Veo, maybe you can talk to Bruce. You, you know, I feel like you might have a better sense of what he likes, not stale bread, and maybe, maybe see if you can coax something out of him as to where they might have went. Wrath has got to be around here somewhere if Bruce is here, right? He never goes anywhere without Bruce, so... Is, is Bruce considered an an animal, or is he some sort of magic? You. You. What is he? A familiar would probably be more associated with magic than with animal, um, but Raph, every time I try to call Bruce his familiar, he yells at me and says, no, I'm the familiar. This is... So, like, I... <laughs> yeah. Because other than that, yes, uh, uh, a, a brief you know, similarity in our looks, but I can't really speak to Bruce. Yeah, okay. okay. I can offer him treats, but I don't particularly want to share I, what I have. I got more stale bread. So, Bruce, where's Wrath? No, but listen, stale bread is fine for me. Again, I stop you and <laughs> take what you're giving to him. I'm like, doesn't... meat, meat, meat. Okay, what if we mm -hmm. went and hunted something fresh? Yeah, I could do that. We could go kill something. Um, I feel like that would appease Bruce. He, I feel like he's down with that. You want to go hunting? We're here to save our friends. Well, what do you, what's what's your what's your master plan? Goggles? Like, <laughs> you, let's try something else. <laughs> well, <laughs> throwing still. You do cat. notice though that these statues around the fountain are cats before offering bowls. Oh. I start walking around. And I put stale bread <laughs> in all of the bowls. Perfect. The statues move slightly, turning their noses up. You don't see them move, but they're like, are they? Like, it's like you look away for a second, you're like, did they just turn their noses up? I'm First telling they you, did. We, need, I would. we need something fresh. Guys, if what's wrong did. with it? <laughs> oh, it's that's, frozen. That's terrible. It's, it's recently, a crouton. <laughs> it's recently it's teleported bread. It's going to be awful. Mm. This feels like. <laughs> wow. Okay. I I have a sense. I've had to hunt and forage mm -hmm. in the many years being a great Caspian leader. Are you a prince? When do you hunt and forage? Don't you like <laughs> just to keep a skill? Yeah, you're right. I'm better at yeah. commanding hunting and foraging. Man, I will hunt. Go, and, <laughs> go ahead and hunt and forage. Okay. <laughs> I'll supervise. Uh, Sebastian, back me up. I'm gonna go find some great. find some squirrels and, and mice or something. <laughs> Maybe even like a bird. Okay. Um, if you want to head out Present. and try to find something to offer so Bruce, plump. yes, certainly. Um, are the the three of you all gonna go together? <laughs> oh, I got it. I'm gonna go off. Okay, Veo's gonna go. Yeah. Okay. What wildlife is there? Good. It's it's so cold up here. Veo. I trust her. Not far from here, um, it is quite cold and there is mm -hmm. thick snow, but there are some forests and uh, wilderness around that something lives out here. Obviously you were already tracking through the wilderness before. As you head out, um, I can either get, uh, give me a survival check, please. Uh, 15. Okay. It is not long before you come across signs of some life. There are snowbirds, small animals, and certainly wolves that live out in the wilderness out here, eking out whatever living they can, despite the harshness of the tundra environment. Roll the d6. 
And you guys can roll me a six as well. Five. Five. Six. Five. Okay. Veo. As you happen upon a copse of trees where the telltale signs of, of snow owls nesting can be seen. Perhaps other birds and creatures dwell in this, these trees. You catch sight of them. There are three colossal white wolves, larger than horses, with snarling manes, and as they walk, a cloud of frost billows out around them, as if the wolves were the heralds of a blizzard themselves. Striding amongst the three wolves is a giant. He is lithe, blue-skinned, and clad in deer furs, and he carries with him a long spear. With a gaze like ice, the giant walks, leading the three wolves directly towards the quarry. You have seen them before they have seen you. Give me a stealth check. 33. Okay. You dive for hiding. <laughs> and they pass. And there's sort of a moment where I imagine you scooch up a tree, and one of the wolves stops and sniffs. <laughs> Growls. But it continues walking along. Oh, no. Um... <clears throat> Okay. I want to let them pass through. Okay. Give it a moment. They leave the copse of trees and are heading towards the quarry. I am going to scurry down the tree and just dash a long way, kind of around them, but I want to make it back to the quarry okay. at high speed. There is no cover between the quarry and the copse of trees where you are at. Okay. And it is, you've been out hunting now enough that you're probably a good 30, 40 minutes away. Okay. Um, it's basically just open tundra between these trees and the end. And the, gonna cast invisibility on myself. Okay. How long does it last up to an hour? An hour, yeah. Okay. And you're going to dash back. Okay. Yeah. With your invisibility up and dashing back solidly, give me a constitution saving throw. Oh, uh, 22. Okay. You do not gain a level of exhaustion. Yes. And you manage to make it back to the quarry ahead of the giants. As soon as I... Unfortunately, <laughs> empty-handed. Yeah. Guys! And I like kind of crash into... <laughs> as my invisibility's kind of like, I guess, wearing off, or I, I undo it, and they're like, We have trouble! We're trouble, sitting trouble. around the fire, the bonfire, mm -hmm. <laughs> of burning bodies. There are wolves and what I assume is a giant on our way. I, I came across them and got back here as soon as I could. We're heading here. Here. It says, they're attacking us again. They came a, a few days ago before all this mess with the creature began. That was one of their, that wasn't the first attack time they attacked us either. Were there they're coming multiple? to finish what they started. We they're blew up a few giants a couple days ago up here in the mountains. They uh, were mutated. This one didn't look the same from what I could tell. And then there was only one. With a few wolves, but only one. Mm. I mean, if the six of us could take down like five giants, then one giant shouldn't be a problem. We, we have, I mean, if it's coming here to attack us and it's one giant, 
We can probably tell him to go away. Well, we could see what this one has to say. I mean, the other ones, yeah. I don't think they're in a place to talk because there's something going on, but yeah. before we... I mean, yes, we could, but... Yeah, I'm not saying murder it as soon as it shows up. Like, tell it, hey, go away. We killed other giants easier than you, so mm. what are you doing here? Yeah. The condition of Ert and the Doctor, are they, they, they look like they're battle ready? Or they look like they've they've struggled. These two, j- looking over them, these two probably need solid recovery time, and Doctor Catton is certainly not a combatant. So I say we meet them before they enter the camp. Uh, Sebastian and I can go meet them more face to face, and Veo, you maybe go off to the side and be ready to jump in. Uh, when things go sideways. When? If? If, when, <laughs> soon. <laughs> <laughs> How does that sound? That's, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a good, it's a great plan. No, there's no way. Okay, I'll ruin it somehow. Hold on. <laughs> no, you're working on your diplomacy. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good chance to practice, you know? <laughs> I, I think, you know, I'll be, I'll be there to be the muscle. You do the talking, and Veo, you get ready to shoot arrows in the face. I mean, that's what I do best. We'll say think... that while Veo was off hunting, the two of you were able to speak with Ert and Dr. Catton and get a summary of what happened. Right. At least. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just like to catch my breath, for, breath first. Catch my breath. <laughs> I'm, I'm sweating. I've never seen you sweat. <laughs> right? I just, I ran really fast. I wanted to make, I had to take the long way around so I didn't. <laughs> Woo! You did really well. Thanks. Great work, Bail. I'm good now. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's Bird go. Time. And we start trudging through the snow in the direction of the giant and the wolves. Mm. Okay. So you're going to head out to meet the giant and the wolves? Yeah. Okay. Are you moving to conceal yourselves in any way or to approach? We're not. No. You okay. don't want to? No. Okay. No? You do it. We're, we're going to talk. We want them to know we're there. Yeah, it's sort of to be like an envoy. Uh, give them a nice sense of that we're coming, but we're just kind of... I mean, I'm getting the sense that we're just kind of walking towards them. Before we set out, I'm going to cast... I'm just making sure here. Uh, comprehend language will allow me to understand the literal meaning of any spoken language. But not speak it. Okay. Well, I'm still going to cast it in case Okay. It, it might be helpful to know. Yeah. Um, do you think I should be... I, I'm just wondering if I should just save... No. I will, I will take a wider kind of scope to this, but I don't want to cast a spell. I want to okay. just like try to sneak using my natural yes. <laughs> stealthy okay. abilities. Unfortunately, the the best you could do for hiding would actually be to be crawling in the snow. Let's do it. I will crawl um, in the snow. Cover yourself. I in literally and, first and, I have to like put yeah. the snow on my fur because I'm a dark yeah. cat. <laughs> it, it's a challenge um, without like actual like white colored camouflage. Mm. It would be. Almost like, oh, yeah. Actually, can I cast disguise self and yes. turn myself yes. into a all right, yeah, a snow okay, leopard? a snow leopard style yeah. like cap? Yeah. I'm just like, sure, Woo. okay. In that case, give me a stealth check with advantage. Ooh. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> 30. All right, you are blending into the snow. Where'd Veo go? <laughs> um, oh, and did you leave? Veo, um, well, Veo is hidden in her snow disguise it is not long after you walk out from the quarry that you see the flurry where the wolves are. The great creatures stop as stepping out from the mist and hail that surrounds their approach steps the singular giant. Unlike the other frost giants that you've encountered before, 
this man is lithe and lanky, um, with uh, clean shaven, aside from a mane of ice colored hair, um, with features almost like chiseled ice. He holds his spear in one hand, and in the other arm, he cradles several stone tablets. And as he sees the two of you, he drives his spear into the ground. I drive my staff into the ground. And he holds up one of his hands and taking his one hand you can see he makes a um a gesture to his mouth and he says something in the giant tongue with comprehend language is cast do i understand you understand and he says he says greetings I do not speak the language of humans. Allow me to cast a spell. I... He, and as he does so, he's he's gesturing to his, 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 his tablets, and with his other hand, he's making a gesture that is evocative of, of a spell-casting gesture. Like, he's trying to mime to you, like, I don't mean you harm, but I need to cast a spell. I kind of glance him up and down, and do I get the sense he, he feels pretty sincere in this? Give me an insight check. I got a 15. Yes, he's sincere. I kind of I nod to him. He casts the tongue spell on himself, and speaking his own language, but in a way now that you can understand, like you hear like the two tones of the words, he says, you are far out from the walls of Helig here. Our friends were lost in the snowstorm and we've come looking for them. I have come. There is a dangerous place nearby. The quarry? Is that what you call the place where the dwarves are digging? Yes. I have come to beg them to stop. They have killed many of my kin, and I have come to ask them to reconsider their path. They have stopped. Most of them are dead. Then it may be too late. They unearthed something. They said it attacked most of them and 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 took them over something that was brought out from the digging yes it happened to the first group of our kin that came here as well i found them and burned them but that thing that is not the danger that is buried here Can you enlighten us as to what the danger might be? Our friends may be in over their head, and we wish to protect them. Very well. You seem sincere. I will tell you that there is only one way to do what needs to be done. If you are willing to help me in this, then we will be at peace. There is no need for a further bloodshed. What is it you would ask of us? I hope that when I tell you, you might understand. The dwarves did not. I'm a pretty reasonable guy. <laughs> I think he saw that. Oh. He doesn't understand. May I approach the quarry? You won't hurt 
the dwarves remaining, will you? How many of them are left? Two. Do they still have their cannons and their guns? Did I see any guns with them? You saw a lot of stuff that had been burned and exploded. They're uh, short on supplies. They're just trying to survive at this point. Good. They're in no position to resist now. We aren't going to leave without our friends. Do you understand? Yes, but you understand that that is no concern of mine. If we are going to work together, then we need to respect what each other is trying to do here. We are going to leave with our friends. What is it exactly that you want to do? The dwarves have done something simply by digging here. I need to make sure that they have not disturbed what was buried here. And if they have, then I will need to bring this news back to Stone Rest as quickly as possible. Guys, there's a chance that, uh, I, I'm gonna say this quietly, but. I'm way over there. <laughs> uh, Pluto, there's, there's a chance that uh, Wrath is disturbing what probably doesn't need to be disturbed. He was very adamant about coming here. What do you think it is? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> Von Schneestrom asked us, asked them to go find a family heirloom. She's been after this for a while. I'm guessing it's in that place. What did you find in her bedroom? Or in the, the mage's tower? Right, we still have to tell you that. Uh, this doesn't seem like the right time. I'll, I'll let you know in, in a few minutes. <laughs> I mean, it might... It might nothing, nothing important, just, you know, some books. Did you find the evil hats. plans? Did you find evil I found plans? some evil plans. Well, that's enough. Giant... Can I, can I call you that? I don't, My uh, name is Dorman. Dorman? Um, you are... Sebastian Crow, pleasure to meet you. And you too? You can't see me. <laughs> oh yes, and, and, and you? I am uh, Pluto Jackson. Um, lovable Caspian Prince. Lovable. <laughs> Remember that, Dorman. Well, if we are going to head back to the quarry, we should at least tell the dwarves before they get there. There's no need for... Mm. You know? Friction. I think maybe we... You you hang back just a few steps and we give them the heads up. That way there's, there's no unnecessary shots fired, if that makes sense. Although I'm... I, I will be totally honest with you. It, they, they are not... They're, they're not combat ready. You may go on ahead and tell these dwarves that I am coming. You have a, until my wool that you have until I finish feeding and tending to my wolves, and I will arrive. Now, now we're on an agreement here. Just making sure we're inviting you to the quarry. We have people there. Mistakes have been made, but they're not digging anymore. We need to get those people out and safe before you do whatever it is you gotta do. And you're just looking. You're just checking things out to see if what's, what has been done has been done. And if it's not, you're just gonna head back and- You are mistaken. Both. Okay. I am telling you, I have no reason for us to fight. I see no reason to hurt you. But I will not be hindered in my path nor in my goals. I will wait in the interest of peace so that there is no bloodshed between us. And that is all I offer you and nothing more. If you... I also don't want bloodshed, Dorman. Good. So as long as you don't hinder us in getting our friends out safely, 
then there isn't an issue here. So long as get retrieving your friends does not hinder my mission, then I will agree to that. Great. I don't see any future problems happening. No, seems clean as a whistle. We're going to head out now. We're going to let the dwarves know. See you in see a few minutes. Very well. Okay, there's... Do you trust this guy? I believe that this is a very honest giant, but the fact that he was not forthcoming with what exactly it is he's trying to do, I get this inkling that us saving our friends is going to hinder his Where? general, I'm here to stop, blah, blah, like, I don't know. Where are they, though? Um, they, they... I think that... Did they leave? Because I just can't see them leaving. Did they head back to healing? No. Are they underground? That's my guess. Why we we should at least check how much time if I had to guess as we're like heading he's back. He's giving you minutes. Like Yeah, like, okay. So not he's, long. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just play it close and like if he steps out of line, like I think we have to do what needs to be done because He's more like a troll than, <laughs> than I, I want to admit. Like I, like I mean, bold. <laughs> Pluto. He's just. It's just. Uh, is that is that is that like the Caspian thing? If you're big, then you're just everything bigger than you is a troll. Um. No, it's more like he. You know, he. Are you trolling me? He gives me that snowplow vibe. Like he needs. What's a he, snowplow? <laughs> 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 he, he's just going to push through everything, you know. Uh, he wants to be the unstoppable force, and I'm going to be the immovable object. And I'm going to be the magical explosion. Sure. And I'm I here. Just, <laughs> hey, I pop up. <laughs> I'm just like, so what did he say? Uh, he just, he gives me, he gives me a, a concern, especially with those magic tablets. He seems like he's not being... All like, what if what if we're letting him do something that we really shouldn't be doing? I mean, like we said before, we're taking care of giants, and we're kind of in their mountains. Yeah, that's so. True. Like us murdering our way through a bunch of giants is just going to be like. And you're sure he's not infected? Like we know for a fact that he's not infected. No, I don't so, know anything. Yeah, I. He could be the one that's infecting the other giants. He could be like the. The puppet master giant guy. Stop putting these thoughts in my head. Now I'm just now I want to blow them up. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta keep your options open. So based on this, what I'm hearing is we might have to take him out. So but, let's just keep an eye on him. If he starts doing something nefarious, we gotta be ready to jump in. That's all I'm saying. We're in like a we trust each other, but we actually all but have only in our the hands on our weapons, sort of trust. Frenemies. It's a, the, yeah, frenemies. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, creating a new word, yeah. We need to get our friends safe. We need and to find Wilhelm. I guess save these dwarves as well. Um, that's the right thing to do, right? We, you, we, When we finish all this, we gotta get them out of here, but I mean, we should let them know that there's a frost, uh, a frost giant yeah. coming. We should yeah. let them know. And I mean, primary more. goal, we find our friends. Anything else that comes after that, bonus. <laughs> like dessert. Yeah. I mean, that's not a bonus. That's oh, part sorry. of the meal strategy. You know? I always say eat dessert like, first. <laughs> uh, yes. And after. <laughs> Double. <to dessert. laughs> you cannot. Yeah, that was bad. And then we arrive back at the quarry. <laughs> With wasting all of our precious minutes. Hey, Ert, Doctor, uh, there's a frost giant that's coming this way. <gasps> On How way. many of them? One. Singular. He's oh. just coming to chat and make sure everything is uh, good here. But I we've I don't... we've made a deal that we are going to get our friends out and he gets to do what he's coming here to do. He asked if you guys were still digging. I said, no, because it doesn't look like you are. The first time the giants came, they just, they said they wanted to talk and we let them close and they started killing us. Mm -hmm. That's oh, not how talking off. works. <laughs> That's he that seems really sincere. feels like right now. That feels like right now. Well, but they it saw that you... what it, they, they saw what we had dug out here, and they immediately told us that we had to 
You had to go. And Dr. Catton says, they were infuriated. They saw everything that was going on here. They saw what we had dug. They said that we were fools. And they attacked us immediately. There's a good chance that you are fools. <laughs> and there's a good chance that what you are digging up is a problem. And just based on this magical pool here, the creepy archways, uh, the giant delirium drill, does the academy know that you have this? Not to be that guy, but like that's that's gonna be an issue. That's breaking Academy Code 17C, I'm pretty sure. I didn't know you knew the rules. I, I, I'm just, it's one of them. Oh. There's like, you know, you need to account for giant pieces of delirium that are outside. It's somewhere. I'm just, I think it's in the 17s. Might be 17D. The, the two of them say, it was the captain that procured the drill. From the academy? Maybe it is the academy, and they're just lending it. Yeah, he's working for the academy. Maybe there's no. something in the... Maybe we can check after to see if we can find any notes or any, like... The drill was made by dwarves, not the academy. Ooh. All right, now that's... that's that's. Uh, I'm just going to let that one slide. <laughs> and I'm not going to report you, because I don't like being that guy. I don't want to be like the, oh, that's so-and-so. You know, I'm not going to do that. But, you know, that's dangerous equipment you got there, and you're digging up creepy ruins but we also with have a danger giant on the way cat stat like maybe the giants are just like don't dig this up it's probably really evil whatever you got going on here and i don't trust von schneestrom at all right now pluto we need to inform you just don't trust her don't trust her don't trust reyna don't trust von schneestrom what did you find in the what did you find in the tower there was a lot of hats i was doing so many push-ups there was so, hats, hats pluto Lots of hats. Who do we associate hats with? The Think queen about of it. thieves. Exactly. <laughs> I knew it. You did? I had my suspicions. <laughs> Actually, it's usually my first suspicion, and then it's confirmed <laughs> later when it happens to be the queen of thieves. And if it's not, it's like a fair suspicion because she hates us. <laughs> she hates us a lot. Definitely yeah. more than a fair suspicion at this point with the hats. Oh, the hats. She's so good. So many hats, so many Were costumes. any of them red? No, but she normally wears no, that no, hat. No, no, no. That throws so. a wrench in the whole thing. No, no, no. She wears her red hat. She yeah. has other hats for costumes. Yeah. Oh, so she's wearing her only red hat right now. Yes. I think the giant's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Did it ever occur to you that she could have more than one red hat? No. Nope. No. <laughs> And, well, and now uh, that's why I thought. Like, I thought maybe she had more red hats in her. Pretty was, versatile hat. I don't know. There was also a teleportation circle in the basement. Yes. I've written down the code. I can get us there. And don't worry, the Queen of Thieves has no idea we were ever there. We put everything back. <laughs> Zero idea. Didn't she give us like a glare at dinner? The Queen of Thieves? No, the the. the, the Sneeze. She's been yeah. glaring at us. I've been following her cat. I'm pretty sure my dog ate her cat three times. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, so yeah, she's yeah, glaring at me fair. at dinner. Like yeah. that's normal. Okay. But yes, there's a giant coming. <laughs> um, I want to try something. Okay. Uh, I want to use my know your enemy feature mm -hmm. with the uh, Dorum. Okay. I would like to know two characteristics. Um, I want to know if his AC is greater than or less than 20. And I want to know if his max HP is greater than or less than 130. His AC is less than 20, but his max HP is higher than yours. Okay, thank you. I'm sizing him up as he's approaching. Yeah. He is, he's definitely not nearly as armored. Like he, he is wearing armor made of hide. Okay. Um, and, but definitely is someone, he's still a giant. Yeah. Ert, I just need to assure you, we've taken out giants before. Pretty sure Veo eats giants for breakfast. Mm. Mm. One giant's not a problem. Don't worry. If anything goes sideways, we'll take care of it. Like we always do. All right. Just stay back and let us deal with it. Yeah. You're fine. You're protected. Very well. You're under the protection of Sebastian Crow and the other two crows. All right. Well, the giant arrives oh. in the camp. Oh. Holy moly. <laughs> With his wolves. 
<laughs> He's a lot bigger on stage. <laughs> Camera adds five pounds. Coming into the quarry, <laughs> the three wolves immediately circle around. They move in to circle around the pool, growling. Oh, I guess they do. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was like that when we got here. <laughs> it wasn't us. <laughs> yeah, we were used to up there. Uh, uh, I, I I'll be down by the pool. We're probably talking to these. Mm. And as they do, they catch sight of Bruce, and the three of them stand at the base of the arches and growl as the cat arches its back and hisses at them. Uh, for the record, uh, Dorman, that's, that cat's with us. <laughs> Dorman sees the cat. takes his spear and moves to a throw. I think it's a familiar. You can just go back, right? What do you do? I charge up my staff and like point it at him and like drop it. He, he says, it is a spy. Can I? Is it light or dark? Is it dim? It is, it is the middle of the day. It yeah. is overcast, but... I've yet to use my shadow step ability. Can I cast a mention door to appear in front of Bruce? Yes, you can. Okay. Okay. He throws his spear. No! As you do. At Bruce. Bruce which, better remember this. You are now in the path of the spear. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, he gets a 25 to hit. I can't cast shield, can I? Because I just cast... Or no, I'm going to cast shield. Which... Sorry, how much did you get? Um, a 25. Oh, no, shield's yes, not going to do yeah. it. No. <laughs> yeah. 20. Yeah, forget that. You shield gets it. me to 19. He's taking a spear to the chest. Yeah, I teleport in front of Bruce, and I'm like, duh, and then a spear <laughs> goes right through me. Mm. Yeah, you take 35 piercing damage mm. as the spear strikes you. Um, like and give me a strength saving throw. That's going to be a one. Okay, uh, the spear uh, knocks you prone and off the top. And the spear comes, and then the spear returns back uh, and her more coming to Dorman's hand. Oh, Okay, Bruce. I run to Sebastian. Bruce! I'm just like, he's a familiar. <laughs> Wrath can bring him back. He's Wrath's best friend. Um, Bruce hisses loudly as the giant prepares to throw the spear one more time and says, do not stand in my way again. We had a deal. Our friends, cat, the cat's one of them. The oath is broken. No one was supposed to get hurt. Was there an oath? You said you wouldn't hurt our friends. Are you okay, Zabat? No. I did not say I would not me. hurt your friends. I said that I would not stop you from saving them so long it did not interfere with my mission. It's a cat. Your friend is one of the ones I am here for. You are so unreasonable. Our friend or the cat? Is he after Wrath? Or is he after the cat? Listen. If he kills the cat, Wrath's gonna kill him. Like, it's all bets are off at this point. I'm bleeding. Um, enough, Dharma. Why are you here? What do you see? I will tell you, but I must destroy the, this beast first, lest it spy on us. Get out of here, Bruce. Just go. Just go somewhere. Go to Wrath. The cat continues to hiss, um, and as it does so, Dorman throws his spear one more time. The spear strikes Bruce, and the cat dissipates. It'll be fine. Well, really glad I took the spear for it. <laughs> yeah, I would highly recommend you live. You are no weak mortal. I stand up, brush some blood off, or just smear it. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. 
And that was a foolish thing that you did. Yeah, well... If I say I am going to do something, I am going to do it. And it is not up for debate. Well, there's something you should know about me, giant. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And that's not up for debate. And I'm here to protect my friends and get them out safely. And if you mess with me again, I've blown up giants bigger than you. I respect your tenacity and your loyalty to your friends. Thank you. Perhaps when I tell you what you do not know, you will realize how deeply you have been deceived by them. Deceived by my friends? Pluto. <laughs> what? I don't have any secrets. <laughs> All right, I'm confused. But hey, you got one. Now tell us, where are they? I do not know where your friends are. Is this, this one also one of your friends? Yeah. Oh yeah, and I un, un disguise myself. Yeah. Wait, do you have a thing against cats? <laughs> yeah, what's please, up? What's up with cats? <laughs> she's been my friend since I was like this tall. So like, no, she's she's cool. Giant. Dorman. She is tainted. Oh, tainted. But not in thrall. That's like she lived in Drachenheim for a while. So I mean, rude. we're all tainted. We all got a little <laughs> bit of delirium poisoning, but <laughs> Jeez. And she has a, an insatiable appetite. But I feel he like steps into the corner by, by the team. pool. Um, and the, the, the wolves continue to circle. It may already be too late. What do you mean? This pool has something to do with why you're here? Yes. Hey, us too. So common goals. You do not know what this place is, do you? Uh, I mean, a, sh a shrine that they, someone really likes cats. We were told it was a uh, family tomb. I would literally love for you to enlighten us. Yeah, Norman. you really are just hiding so much. This is a dark place. Seems pretty light. <laughs> Couldn't even use my shadow stuff. That's not even what it's called. Shadow walk, sorry. You humans stand in defiance of the gods. Mm, I do that a lot. This was a place where you made some of your earliest betrayals of them. I'm pretty sure I betrayed them all over the place, but mm. go ahead. Like, 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 Humans. The humans, there was a time before you humans counted time. Yet you walked this earth and the gods found you wanting and resolved to wipe you from it and start anew. And yet rather than accept your fate as a failure of the gods, you called out to a dark thing to save you. And this was where that call was answered. Well, one of many places and one of many calls. The gods knew what you were doing. Great Ogham, in all his knowledge, knew and thus this creature of trickery that you thought would be familiar to Morrigan no Shagarak and Morrigan together they tricked it and here the great smith buried it in molten metal And yet you still come seeking its knowledge. This thing, he points to where the cat was. It is fickle and it knows no master. Yet here in this place, 
those who accepted its gifts called out to dark stars that they would allow their fickle master to grow fat and feed with impunity. Right. So you're here because religious stories, you know, folklore. I've been in a, so this isn't a, uh, a quarry or a ruin. It's an old temple. Uh, been in a lot of temples of the sacred flame. They also have stories. Oh, the fires and, you know, enlighten you from within and elves. Yeah, elves have a bunch of temples too and their own religious beliefs. Everybody's got them, but like We don't murder actually we do a lot of murder on behalf of you religious beliefs. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't murder on behalf of religious beliefs, but uh, Sacred Flame certainly does. It's just magical ones. It's just magical beliefs. Oh no. <laughs> this whole world. Who is who is your master? Who is the one you serve? He holds the stone tablets close to him. He said and you must remember that he's using the spell to speak to you. And so though he uses the terms Ogham and Shegarak, and speaks the names of the old gods. The w names that he gives them in his tongue are not the same as what the spell translates to, mm. right? Um, but he speaks, father of all knowledge, protector of truth. This is the will of the old gods. The gods you humans have abandoned and betrayed. So this isn't a ruin to the old gods? It's, I, I mean, it's a temple to some form of the old gods. Uh, He's saying it's something much darker. Many creatures call themselves gods, and you mortals believe, and mortals believe them. Mm. I'm not big on gods. Uh, they don't really show up anywhere. Uh, people claim that they give them power, but I've seen actual power. Power is magic. It's the arcane. That's something tangible, something real. All of this god stuff. Where are they? That cursed magic that courses through your own veins. That is why the gods have turned their back on you. But you said that gods turn their back on mortals. If what you're telling us is true, it's the gods that saw the mortals as unfit for this earth. And when they went to wipe them, we simply fought back. You know, if anything, it was the gods that turned on the mortals first. So I have more respect for my ancestors than I think you're giving us credit for. It is foolish to question the will of the gods. Trying to reason with somebody this into their uh, gods and stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's got the tablets and everything. Like, he is yeah, like signed up. Uh, you you kind of remind me of my friend uh, Rath. Very into his masters, uh, so to speak. Which uh, we're going to head in. We're going to figure out how to get in here. We're going to get our friends out. Uh, and oh, we then, don't even know if they're they are. I mean, there's some footprints. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, the footprints that led into the... I mean, Bruce was right there. Thanks. And there's footprints. We got to figure out how to get into this place. Yeah. And uh, you're not going to stop us. This place must remain shut. It's already been open. And our friends are stuck in there. I think our friends are stuck in there. Can anybody, can anybody verify that? You're the one with the magic. I was gonna ask Bruce more, but does the magic solve everything? Yes. <laughs> solve the thing. I'm solving what? it. Okay. Then it seems our paths and wills are at odds. I told you once that I would not waver from my purpose. Do you wish to feel my spear? plunge into your heart once more. Uh, you got me once, you're not gonna get me again. Do you want to feel what it's like to be taken apart from the inside out? 
it will not come to that. Roll for initiative. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you roll? Uh, six. What'd you roll on the die? Five. Oh, okay. We both rolled twos. Oh. <laughs> Nine. You still go first, though. Nine. Um, of us. <laughs> mm. Guys, I just talked such a big game. I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna get another spear in the oh, chest you're right taking, after you're saying taking that. A spear in the chest. <laughs> you're kind of covered. It. You're right. Okay. He already said I'm I'm tainted, so <laughs> I think he's. Yeah, you. <laughs> like, well, what do we got? Be Nine. Nine for. Veil. Veil. Six for Pluto. Six for Pluto. Four for Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> we were too busy talking the talk. Mm-hmm. Veo's still over here. Actually, that's probably best for Veo. Probably. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll see. Sorry, Bruce. <laughs> took, I took a monster amount of damage. You, you, you took a spear for a familiar? <laughs> I was try I'm trying to get on Bruce's good book. I Sebastian like... likes Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Not in the same way Wrath likes Bruce. He just <laughs> he just he's very fascinated by this cat. Okay. So Sebastian, are you I feel like you would have been not standing behind the archways while you were talking. Like I feel like you guys would have been standing somewhere other than Yeah, and and yeah. I'm right beside him, but wherever we are, like I feel like you got up and then moved. Yeah. We maybe were more approached to him. Like on the other side? Yeah. Okay. Like we get, we came up to him to kinda of... Yeah, that seems fair. We what? wanted to be also give him more height. <laughs> Yeah, he's not really, tall enough, really, so we really need to stand in the neck, quarry. Neck bend. Just look up at him. Okay. Um, so, in in that case, um, seeing that Sebastian, you were the first one to provoke, provoke him, he steps forward, and as, as he does, his spear becomes encased in a field of frozen energy, and he drives the spear right towards you, Sebastian. Yeah. He's gonna make two attacks, mm -hmm. getting a 25 and a 17 to hit. I cast shield, which blocks the first of the attacks, well, the 17, and I go, ha ha, and then his second jab stabs <laughs> through the shield. Shatters oh. through, dealing 40 cold damage. Into the same wound. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, no, again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And then he takes his hand and spins around bef before him as the tablets that he carries glow, um, glow with, um, with energy. And as he does so, um, a gust of wind picks up in a vortex around him. Cool. Okay. And with that, we go to Vale. Okay. Um, I, from where I am, start trying to... I'm scared of these wolves, so I'm going to go with this one. Uh, for a few attacks. I think I get three, three attacks. I got crit! Oh! Woo! Oh! Yeah! Okay. Great start. Um, and no one is near him, so I don't get to sneak attack. Um, sorry, I, I was, I, I just realized like, oh, no. I've used that. 30 damage. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> the, the wolf yelps as the arrow crashes into its side. Second go. Uh, 20 to hit. Another hit. 21 to hit, yeah. Um, and that is 19 damage. Okay. And then one more uh, with my Dread Ambusher. Uh, that is... The three shots bury into the wolf's flesh and it howls in pain. 32 damage. Oh, okay. The, the, it limps slightly after the second shot and it turns about to leap towards you as the third shot lands killing it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice fail. And then nice I, fail. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to, can I get the thing here? Yeah. 
Um, use my feline agility. Um, how high is this? Um, it is as high as the measuring stick indicates it is. Uh, so, 10? 10? 10, ten, 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 yeah. ten yeah. feet? Okay. Um, and yeah, okay, I'm going to move and use my climbing speed to get up. Up at top here. Okay. Uh, just like Bruce, but opposite. As you do so, <laughs> Dorman, the winds swirl around and strike towards you, Veo. Give me a strength saving throw. Oh no. Oh, no. oh uh, 18. That's exactly what you needed. <laughs> uh, you are not thrown in the air and land prone. Uh, so you uh, you are, uh, you're all good. I'm already moving as quick as the wind. Okay, so. <laughs> quick, quick as the wind. In that case, uh, the, the wolves, um, seeing that you have slain one of their pack, um, they are going to come for you. Um, and one of the wolves leaps up onto the, uh, oh, yeah, they they can definitely do that. Uh, it clamors up, and I imagine that it kind of, it's big enough that it, that it by extending its paws and kind of leaping, it can bite towards your foot. Um, and as it does so, it gets a 19 to hit. Yes. Okay, you're gonna take um, 15 points of piercing damage, and I need you to make a strength saving throw. 15? Yeah. Uh, can I use my um, uh, uncanny dodge? Yes, you can. So seven. Mm-hmm. And strength. Oh, uh, thirteen. It pulls you off the top ah! to the ground, and and you f and it basically, I imagine it basically leaps up. Grabs you by the leg and pulls you off, so it's not even on the on the top anymore. And the ah! other wolf bites you savagely, uh, but uh, you're able to roll out of the way as it as it goes for the bite. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't like wolves slash dogs. <laughs> Pluto, it is your turn. Um, can you pass me the uh, the range finder? Mm -hmm. um, what's the distance? Oh, it's pretty far. Um, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to run towards Veo, leap into the air. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the cape of Sebastian Crow's mother to Dimension Door. Okay. Uh, over here. Okay. And I will action surge and begin the primal assault of Ignatius on these. Already monsters, uh, activating uh, Ignatius in the air. Ignatius, and I'm gonna use a luck point, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna use uh, to turn a one into a crit. Ooh! Nice, Ooh! nicely done. So worth it. Yes. Um, that's the luckiest luck point I've ever seen. That's that was well worth it. Uh, Fifty-three damage. Ooh. <laughs> uh, it is badly bloodied by that that attack. Um, second attack. Um, Just crit again. Get off my cat. Uh, oh, I got a 19, so like a 20, uh, Does 32 hit. to hit. Yeah. Um, for mm, 23 damage. 23, that slays it. I, I slay the, the one wolf that was uh, viciously attacking Veo, and I turn against the next one. Um, uh, getting a 20 to hit. It is a hit. For 33 damage. And it is wounded, but still alive. And I stand over Veo, and I and I impose myself and my shield between uh, the wolf and... As you do, the giant turns to face you, you and Veo, and it holds, and in vengeance, he cries out, as a bolt of lightning comes straight down on you and Veo, and I need dexterity saving throws from I wish to try. Are you able to counter You've already used your action to shield. Right. I, raising my shield into the air, the shield of Saint Vitruvio, I cast counter spell. Be super cool, but it's not a spell. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I raise my shield to block the lightning bolt that's about yeah. to hit us. So we're about something. to get hit by Yeah, it. you can use your shield master action, but yeah, this ability is not a spell. Darn it. Okay, uh, dex saving? Yeah. 
I, I rolled a 20, I have a plus 10, okay. and I have evasion. <laughs> okay, so Vale, you take no damage. Well, I definitely am using another luck point because <laughs> a three is not gonna cut it. Um, oh, okay, I get a, a 17. Looking for 18, buddy. <laughs> oh, no! All right, you're gonna take 30 thunder damage. See, the thing about using a metal shield is like the light <laughs> I, I, I use it as just, a It as just a rips rod. right through your body. <laughs> <laughs> Veo's like fine, but you're just like yep. skeleton Pluto. Sebastian, it's your turn. I <laughs> lock eyes Super with Dorman, and in his mind he hears Sebastian's voice say, bend to my will, as my eyes turn inky black. But I'm going to cast Mind Sliver on him. Okay. That's going to be an intelligence saving throw. Ooh. Uh, I get a 17. I needed an 18, so... I know that feeling. <laughs> he takes... nine damage. Mm -hmm. Nine psychic damage and has to subtract his next saving throw by 1d4. I then, after he bends to my will, after I cast that, I reach out and shadowy tendrils, his own shadow lifts around him to wrap itself around him and I'm gonna cast Hold Monster. Okay, Ooh. you need a wisdom saving throw, yeah? Wisdom uh, saving so throw minus 1d4. <laughs> I'm, I'm quickening that, by the way. Okay, I get a 12. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a legendary resistance. It only has one legendary resistance, but I gotta use it. Oh, five. oh that's five. good. That's good. That was really good. That's good combo. Good. Quickened that. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so as the shadowy tendrils wrap around him, he like forces them away, and him and Sebastian are now in this like mental mage lock. Yeah. And as he locks on onto you, he cries out, "My will is my own!" And he leaps down from the edge of of, of the quarry yeah, and drives his spear down toward towards you, making two attacks, oh, getting boy. a crit. Oh boy! Um, oh no! And uh, the crit is going to be um, eighty lightning damage. Uh. <laughs> so I have twenty five hit points. Okay. So you're... Do you... Can your saving throw thing... Oh, uh, yeah. Save you? <laughs> so he... Okay. So he drives the spear through me again. You see Sebastian go limp and, like, just die. And then immediately goes... <gasps> and, like, gets back up holding the spear and he has one hit point. Is it is it automatically one hit point? Or no, you... but we're going to roll for it. And I'm going to be fine. Don't even worry about it. I actually uh, don't know. Oh, actually, yeah. Five plus the damage taken. It was 80 damage. So you have to roll an 85 on Yeah, you have to roll an 85. Don't worry, guys. I have a plus, uh, plus, uh, plus, um... So after my gasp of air and I come back with one hit point, I just died. <laughs> you, you, you let out a final gasp. It's mostly spear air. Okay. <sighs> he drives a spear into you and you get two automatic death saving throw failures. No! <sighs> Die! Mm -hmm. as, uh... boop, boop. That's fine. Everything's fine. Every Everything's good, guys. Don't worry. Mm. I really didn't know he had a legendary resistance. I had him. I say as I die. <sighs> okay. You need to know how far you are away. Veo, it is your turn. You are prone. Okay. Um. Oh, I've. I, I'm thinking about misty stepping over. Does that take away my prone, or does the do I land prone misty stepping? If you give me an acrobatics check. Okay. I'm gonna use that one. Sixteen. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, misty step to your feet. Okay. So I misty step 30 feet. Mm hmm. Now, what do you do? So, how far away am I now? You are. If I. About. Can you bonus action dash? I just use my bonus oh, action yeah, yeah. misty step. About, about 35 away. Do you have your, what's your tabaxi thing that doubles your speed? I already used it. Ooh. It's fine, it's, everything's fine, guys. What about, what, 
in the timeline of of this world. <laughs> How far away are you? Okay. She was 65 feet uh, at I the start. I think so. I was going Five, straight. 10, so I'm here. 15, 20. I mean, the measurement matters. I think you can make it to him. Yeah. You want to feed him a potion? Five, yeah. 10, Under 15, his legs. 20, Under 20, the 20, I mean, you're Yeah. Give me. Okay. 30, 30. You miss these up to your feet. You're gonna have to power slide through the giant. I do. Give it. me another acrobatics check. <laughs> okay. Sixteen. All right. You power slide under the giant's legs, and then what do you do? Uh, shove a potion, my last potion of greater healing, down your throat. Okay. That's that's greater healing is twenty. Twenty. So that's my bonus action. My action. Um, just make sure. Uh, <gasps> yeah, yep, that's what we're gonna do. All right, oh. the wolves, uh, I only have one more wolf left, so it's gonna go for Paluto. Uh, it gets a 20, uh, oh, sorry, I, actually, I don't have that advantage anymore because I don't have pack tactics, Thank so. Because <laughs> I killed all the other wolves. <laughs> um, I get a 21 to hit. That hits. 15 oh, yeah. piercing damage and give me a strength save. Oh, yeah. This is where Pluto shines. He gets a 24. Okay, you are not knocked prone. Pluto, oh. it is your turn. I... You had the two failed death saves marked down? I did. Okay. But now I'm back. Okay, how many hit points do you have? 20. Almost the same as before. That, re that <laughs> refreshes my death saving throws, yeah? No, it doesn't. No? What? Um, you have to take a rest before the reset. Uh... Oh, I didn't know that. No. I'm going to, pretty sure. I got it reversed on my end. Okay. That's so tense. <laughs> I'm gonna drive my, I'm gonna. Oh, the number is reset to zero when you regain any hit points. Okay, okay. <sighs> No, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dirty liar. Dirty <laughs> damn liar. Stop trying no. to be a chaotic evil dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm wrong. Okay, um, I'm going to... That would be a good move. Attack the wolf. Okay. I'm going to murder it. Uh, I get a 16. I thought you had to... Uh, uh, no, that's prior edition. 16, it is a hit. Okay. <laughs> How to how to kill Sebastian Crow? Yeah, you're really. Quiet. I think it was fourth edition that they you're, weren't you're, reset. You yeah. just really want me dead right now. Uh, Twenty-seven damage. <laughs> that does slay the wolf. <laughs> and I am going to run at this creature, this giant, and I'm going to bonus action quick toss my javelin of lightning. Yes. Okay. Are you turning it into lightning? Um. I have to decide, I think, if I hit, I get a 19 to hit. It does hit. Um, I, hmm, I don't think it affects if I turn into lightning. I think I can just do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do some lightning damage. Wait. Okay, cool, you deal zero. No! He's in the lightning damage again. No! <laughs> um, that's you you're asking for free. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, okay, so he takes no lightning damage. But I want him to make a strength saving throw. He gets a 36. <laughs> he, nothing happens. <clears throat> <laughs> and, uh, sorry, my math's wrong. He gets a 30. Okay, that's, that was close. <laughs> he needed to get a 29. <laughs> really? No. Okay, that's so sad. <laughs> Sebastian, you're alive. It's your turn. Eyes turning inky black again. Make another intelligence saving throw. Uh, I get an 11. Are you mind slivering me again? Yes. 13 psychic damage, okay. minus 1d4, and I'm gonna quicken again a spell. This time I'm gonna quicken Vortex Warp. Okay, constitution saving throw. Yeah. Uh, I get a 25. Darn it! He's really, he's really strong. Yeah, I know, I was hoping 
you know. Don't do anything strength based. <laughs> the dice. <laughs> I was just hoping for some dice. You fool. Give me a strength saving throw. Me? Yeah. What did I do? Uh, how's a four? Uh, he hurls you uh, 20 feet back with with a blast of wind away from him. Away from him. <laughs> At least it's away from him. <laughs> yeah, preferable. Do I, do I go out of there? Yeah, you, no, you smash directly away from him into the wall. Uh. Yeah. yeah, and you land prone. Well, you still were prone. Yeah, so I'm just sliding. Yeah. <laughs> like a hockey puck. Just... No, you were mobile for a bit. You were in the air. Any, anything else, Sebastian? No, that's, I mean, maybe I'll stand up from prone. Okay, that, that's smart. A little dizzy, a little disoriented, a little sad. <gasps> and he says, your tainted friend shall not save you. And he attacks Veo. Oh, Veo, <laughs> getting a 29 to hit. Yeah. For um, 40 cold damage. Uh, I'm gonna use my uncanny dodge. Okay, uh, and then uh, he's just gonna move right back up to Sebastian again. What? And uh, uh, attack. Yeah. Isn't that an opportunity attack from Veo? No, he's still in Veo. And Veo doesn't have a melee weapon equipped. Yeah, uh, hit him with his claws. He gets a 29 to hit but you, But I Sebastian. used my reaction already. Uh, yeah, I can't do anything about that. 40 cold damage. Okay. <laughs> At least your death saves are not Ah! Oh, I stand back up and he just... God, this, this, this sphere is so big. Veo. Oh my God. Um. I told him I'd take him apart from the inside out and I've done nothing. In fact, it's more of your insides are out right now. My insides are on the outside. My outsides are on the inside. I'm a mess. <laughs> For someone that's not religious, you're very holy. Oh, good, good one, Pluto. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm dying. I can't speak. I'm. I go unconscious after that. Yeah, you make your joke. I go unconscious. I. I'm trying to see if I have any more potions. Yeah, you can't make a DC 45. Okay. Yeah, no. Yeah. I have a plus 12. <laughs> oh, I have one more potion of healing. Okay. I'm sorry, I, guys. I get over there. <laughs> So you're just running in between the giant's legs, feeding me potions. I'm like, can you run away? Take my advice. I'm pretty good at it. Uh, I'm so full of potions. Anything else, man? I have no more. Uh, oh, wait. I, hold on. Let me check my bonus. Um, oh, man. Um, I'm... Dashed... Uh, I don't think disengaging really will do anything. No, that's it. Anything else, Vale? Nope. Pluto. I run at the giant. I think you got it. Okay. Yeah. And I begin the assault of stop killing Sebastian. Uh, I get a 24 to hit. I get a uh, 21 to hit. And I get a... 28 to hit. All of them hit. 36 damage, 26 damage, and ooh, yeah, 34 damage. Nice. How, so 34, 26. And 36. Okay, so, ooh, that is grievously wounded. All right, he is bloodied. Nice. And on my last attack, um, I'm going to do a distracting strike, which is just gonna add a, another nine damage, okay. and he is uh, at the next attack against him before my turn has advantage. All right, Sebastian, it is your turn. I limp. <laughs> I'm just gonna cast, uh, just... <laughs> Sebastian's, Sebastian's tired. Not just, he can cast it, Come Okay. On. You can do it, you Sebastian. It. Ta tear him from the inside out or something. <laughs> Shoot, Shoot what you said you were gonna do. I... Stop teasing him. I run away and then I turn, <laughs> coat billowing in the wind, and I Savage. raise I raise my staff, my eyes start to glow purple, and I cast animate objects, and a bunch of rocks from the quarry 
from all directions, machine gun towards him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Love that. All right. So you animate a bunch of the the rocks. Yeah. So we're gonna have them act immediately after you. Okay. Uh, so yes, animate objects is cast. Um, how many do I get to make? Uh, I would say you can choose whether you want tiny, small, or medium. So it would be basically uh, whether you want a bunch of tiny rocks or, yeah, I think it's eight, yeah, 10 non-magical objects. So yeah, you can animate um, 10 tiny rocks. All right, I'm gonna roll five attacks at once. Okay. Uh, that's a crit. That's a 27. Hit. Uh, What's the lowest one? Lowest one is a 12. Everything hits. Okay. Uh, so that's the first five. Let me okay, do the other so you five. Have one crit and five hits. One crit and four hits. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, lowest one is an 11. That misses. And then everything else is higher than that. So, so eight hits and one crit. Eight okay. hits and one crit. Nice. Um, 1d4 plus four damage. So eight for the crit. So that'll be or, the the just the, the hits is thirty six damage and then just roll the d fours. Right. So the, the yeah the yeah so it, it is forty damage and then just roll nine d fours. Oh there was one. All the d fours. Yeah. You good? Two more. You like d fours because they're like tiny little pyramids. Yeah. Points for flavor. <laughs> 26. So that's 66 damage total. Cool. So uh, I, st I stand up, I've raised the staff, and a bunch of rocks just make as many holes as in him as he has made in me. He uses his legendary action to call down a bolt of thunder on you in response. Give me a dexterity saving throw. I got a 14. Okay. I'm going to roll this one, because uh, that's going to be uh, uh, three... 40, 10, thunder damage. 15 thunder damage, buddy. I mean, I'm, I'm back down to zero. No, use your thing now. You can make right. it. Right. <laughs> I can do this one. This is, this is achievable. I get a, a, a 28. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So the lightning bolt hits me, and I go down again, and then I just stand back up. And I me look, and Bear look at each other like, oh, God, again? <laughs> and I stand back up, and I look at Pluto, and I, and I go, I didn't hear no bell. And I win. <laughs> Third time's the charm. Bayo's, Bayo's in the middle of putting away another health potion. She's like, oh, okay. I have none left. I'm like, oh, good, because I don't have anything to bring you back. I, <laughs> ointment? I don't know which dice are yours. Oh, I don't even okay. know. You guys take your oh, here. One of the purples and the silver and the... Dorman says, fine, I'll kill you last. Oh, uh, and he attacks Veo first, getting a 32 to hit. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. going to be 40 cold damage. Uh, and I can uncanny dodge. Has it, it been around? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, how you looking? I'm okay. He's going to go for you again. Huh? Uh, getting a 19 to hit. Yes. Okay, another 40 cold damage. And I'm going to make uh, my sentinel attack against him. Uh, and I crit. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. You're going to wish you attacked me, big boy. Um, he, uh, as he cries, this cursed being shall not revive you again. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's cursed me before. I'm not cursed. Uh, 50 damage. That kills him. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, uh, what happens? He goes I, for Veo, driving the spear in, in, into Veo, and is like about to twist it to finish the blow. I'm going to go for like behind the knee to drop him. Uh, so as he drops to one knee, as he's dropping, I drive Ignatius through like his uh, oh. neck up into his skull, and uh, and I go, ding. <laughs> Dorman collapses already cold as ice his corpse 
I begin sawing off pieces of Dorman, and I <laughs> and I'm going to use them as offerings to the cats. Oh, so. <laughs> the tablets he carried clatter across the ground as you shear off pieces of Dorman's flesh. <laughs> I'm just I'm just having a having a sit down. Do you want the tablets? I, they look really heavy. <laughs> I'll carry them for now. Yeah, they're like the size of your torso. Oh, yeah. There's Maybe not much of that left. Yeah. Maybe we can we can prop them up against something and we can read them later. For mm -hmm. now, maybe we just take a moment to gather ourselves. <laughs> for, uh, ouch. This is all I'm gonna say. Do we have anything? He was a worthy. A worthy opponent. I. He. He. He must have known something. Is it safe? Says Ert. Like I said, we had it covered. <laughs> What's fine? We protected you. Dr. Catton says, I, I. I can help with your wounds. Oh, a bit. <laughs> That's lovely of you. He's died twice. <laughs> I've died a lot today. Uh, Dr. Catton does know some healing magic, and uh, you can each regain 20 hit points with Dr. Catton's care. That's huge. Do you have any potions? I, I will check. Uh, how much? How many hit points? 20. 20. Oh, good. I have... <clears throat> I have a lot more potions on Rath. <laughs> I think Rath is an abnormal amount of potions. I, I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna oh, that's a zero. I have zero potions of greater healing. Why is it in there? Uh, I oh, no. I only have um, uh, the ointment, mm. but maybe we can um, we can find shelter and just rest. You probably should have bought some potions. <laughs> we have a lot of group money right now. <laughs> it's gonna suck dying with all this money and no right. potions. <laughs> <laughs> 4,700 gold. And that's just in gold. I think we have tons of, like, like sapphires. I have other stuff written down. <laughs> Treasures. Yeah, I have no We're potions. really rich. <laughs> we need some healing. Although the Academy doesn't like us right now, I guess. So. No, you're part of the Academy. You can get us healing potions, Sebastian. Just in theory. Hmm. Okay. Um, can we take a long rest? <laughs> <laughs> At least... At least a short one before we go we see our friends again. We should probably at least, at least, um, yeah, we, I mean. I need a nap, you know. If you need, if you need to rest, that's, I think that's fine. Maybe during the rest, do you think you can read these tablets? Because I have a feeling that Captain Lightning Stick over there that's knew nice. how to open. Yeah, na yeah, I want, I take his spear. <laughs> How big is it? Is it like a flagpole? Oh, it's like a tent pole. It's like twenty feet. It's gigantic. We could we could pull vault with it. Um, I'm just thinking that these tablets might have a way to open the door that he didn't want opened. Mm. I'll read them. <laughs> Sebastian says, propped up against the side of the quarry, I'm like, I'm bleeding like, his own blood. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll read the tablets, Pluto. Just. Just, just them. put them beside me. And... Okay. I'm really tired. I want to now. now. Just rest now. Just it's okay. It's okay. We're we're good. Not that kind of rest, Pluto. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. No, stay awake. No, stay awake. Stay awake. Stay awake. <laughs> stay awake. <laughs> Can't have you drifting off there, buddy. <sighs> we should. Uh, okay, I I'm I'm fine with setting up camp and uh, attempting a long rest before we do anything major. I need a snack. Let's do it. Okay. Well, in that case, you make your you head back up to the dwarves camp. Dr. Catton helps tending to your wounds as the three of you take your short rest. As a number another rumbling earthquake tremors through the camp as you recuperate. That is where we'll end the session. Oh. I swear that's not my tummy making that rumbling, okay? Guys, I was ready to be so cool in that combat encounter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were! You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. 
I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> Sick. Ding. <laughs> you still get Ding the dog. line. You still get the line. Ding like, <laughs> we're taking a short rest? Yeah. Yes, and we'll pick up there next time. Got it. Okay. Thank you, as always, to our amazing players, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for uh, deciding to just kill my my intended helpful NPC <laughs> instead of a... Uh, it wasn't <laughs> helpful. <laughs> helpful. Well, you know, well, you know, choices. 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 Is, Raph the, is Raph the bad guy? No. Oh. If he was helpful, he wouldn't have tried to murder us as soon as we said we were getting our friends back. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. And he had this thing against cats, which I just yeah. can't. I, felt, I can't pass it. Felt a bit of bias from that. Giant. <laughs> tainted. He's <laughs> not tainted. Uh, he's fine. He's, he's a dog person. <laughs> <laughs> also, a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his work behind the scenes. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks for laughing at me as I continually died. Um, and a huge thank you to our Dungeon Master, oh, yes. Mark yes. Martin, yes. Amazing. for really wanting to kill me tonight. Thank you. I love choices. This is great. <laughs> choices! <laughs> um, in our game tonight, we use an... Uh, a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us permission to use them in our streamed games, and you can use them at home in your own tabletop games, and we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. We have some uh, amazing terrain by Dwarven Forge, uh, miniatures by uh, WizKids and Hero Forge. We have music by Tabletop Audio, and uh, player character artwork by uh, Elizabeth Perot. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts, including Yes, 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 Troll Killer. Check it out at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community helping to support our work. If you enjoy the work that we do create on YouTube, Twitch, and elsewhere, please consider becoming a patron of the channel by following the links in the description below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons, so make sure to hop onto our Discord and chat with us about all things D&D, all things Drakenheim, and any other nerdy topics you want. Be sure to catch all the content we post on YouTube as well on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can subscribe to the channel as well to be notified when all the latest stuff drops. And be sure to tune in next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube and check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in Draconine.